Shortcut keys are combinations of keys, usually two or three, that perform a certain act, such as copying a block of text. Anything that can be done with a shortcut key can be done using drop-down menus and buttons. However, if there are certain functions you perform often, it's helpful to memorize the shortcut associated with that function. To reach the shortcut screen, go to the Tools drop-down menu and select Customize. Then select Keyboard from the menu at the top of the pop-up screen. Select Writer, and you'll see a scrolling list of shortcut keys along with the functions they perform. The actual key combinations will change slightly depending on whether you are working on a Mac or a PC. I'm creating these tutorials on a Mac, so the examples you'll see pertain to Macs. However, the biggest difference between Mac and PC shortcuts is that Mac uses the command key, sometimes shown as a looped square, while PCs use the control key, shortened to CTRL. Shortcut key combinations are used by placing the cursor where you want the action to take place and then pressing the relevant keys at the same time. If you aren't getting the result you want, try pressing the command or control key just a moment before the additional keys and holding it for just a little longer after releasing the additional keys. Practice a few functions until you get the hang of it. For the most part, you'll find any function you might want already assigned to a shortcut key. But there are a few things you need to know in order to read the list properly. First, capital letters can generally be ignored, so if you see the instruction to press Command and a capital B, you don't need to capitalize the B. Simply press the Command and B keys. Second, if you see a shortcut labeled F1, this does not mean that you should press the letter F and the number 1. Rather, you need to look at the top of your keyboard for the keys that are labeled F1 through F12 and press the key corresponding to F1. Third, and this primarily applies to PC users, if you see the combination Control plus B, you are not being asked to press three keys, Control, Plus, and the letter B. Rather, Plus is simply there in place of the word AND. You are being told to press the Control key and the letter B. Fourth, if you're using a Mac, you'll see a fat arrow in lieu of the word SHIFT. So the shortcut Fat Arrow F12 means you need to press the SHIFT key and the F12 key. In a PC, you'll probably see the same command represented as SHIFT plus F12. As a note, when the shortcut calls for a shift, it's usually best to press the shift key first and then hold it while you press the other key or keys. If you press them all at once, the keyboard doesn't always recognize that you intended to press shift. If you scroll down the list of options, you'll see that you have many shortcuts to choose from. How many you'll use on a regular basis really depends on how you work. I typically get by with just the shortcuts for selecting all the text in a document, copying and pasting. However, I know a lot of writers who memorize and use dozens of shortcuts. If you're just learning to use shortcuts, I suggest you start with just one or two. Then, as you get comfortable, you can add more to your repertoire. Now, there's just one more aspect of shortcut keys you should know about. If you scroll down the list, you'll see that not every shortcut key combination has been assigned. This gives you the option of assigning a shortcut key to a task you perform often. While it's possible to assign styles to shortcut keys, you'll probably find it's much quicker to simply add that button to your visible menu. The real value of creating shortcut keys is to quickly call up macros and special characters. I find that I often use the accented E associated with words like resume and fiancé, so I'm going to create a shortcut key for that special character. As a first step, you need to record the macro associated with the special character. Go to the Tools drop-down menu and go to Macros, Record Macro. A small box will appear to show the macro is recording. Be careful not to hit any keys except the ones you need to select the accented E because the program is now recording your keystrokes. Go to the Insert drop-down menu and choose Special Character. Then select the accented E and click OK. Click the Stop Recording button on the Macros box, and the OpenOffice Basic Macros dialog screen will appear. Give the macro a name you'll recognize, and click Save. Now return to the shortcut menu by clicking Tools, Customize, and the Keyboard tab. In the Shortcut Keys list, choose and highlight an unused shortcut key. I'm going to use Command-8. 
Now go to your category list and select the OpenOffice macro folders and expand it. Find the macro you just created and select it. Then click Modify. Finally, click OK. And that's it! Now whenever I click Command-8, the accented E will appear without my having to use a series of drop-down menus and pop-up screens. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial on using and making shortcut keys. I do want to leave you with a final caution. Avoid changing existing shortcut keys and limit your shortcuts to actions you perform often. Thanks for joining me for this tutorial.